All right. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Township Committee meeting uh, of Delanco Township, May 3rd, 2021. This is via remote, Zoom remote access from various locations in the greater Delaware Valley and across the country. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Here. Ms. Fitzpatrick. She, she is muted. Nice there. Kate, if you can hear me, you are muted. Did we just lose her? Hang on one second. I'm trying to help her here. Okay. Kate, if uh, you see the thing that says unmute, uh, uh, there she goes. Here. Hi, Kate. <laughs> okay. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. Mr. Templeton. Here. Thank you. Also present, Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator, Mr. Fox, our Township Engineer. Uh, let's see, Mrs. Lohr, Municipal Clerk, Mrs. Martin, Deputy Mis Municipal Clerk. Um, Mr. Fenimore, is he out there? Uh, Chief Justice DeSanto, our Police Chief. And we have Aaron, Mayor. Fenimore, our IT Specialist. Mr. Fenimore is on, he's on my phone. Oh, very good. Thank you, Mr. Fenimore. Uh, I do not have a flag in my current location, so I'll dispense with the flag salute. Uh, Sunshine statement, please, Mrs. Lohr. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. And written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Um, this meeting is, uh, via remote Zoom and with the meeting ID and passcode published on the website as well as posted on the bulletin boards and posted on the front township window. The advanced public comments uh, will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail and they must be received no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the published public meeting and they will be uh, submitted to the municipal clerk's attention and the um, Members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting, during the public comment session, may do so either via the audio option or by typing their comment or question via the Zoom chat option. And then again, the township agenda, the agenda for this meeting is available on the township website at delancotownship.com. Hey, very good, thank you. Uh, public comment statement, the purpose of the public comment sessions is to allow residents to share the information and reviews with the Delanco Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it is not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. Uh, report of advanced remote meeting comments and questions. Mrs. Lohr, do you have anything? We re I did receive several things prior to the meeting. Um, they're not really questions as more um, letters. So I was gonna do those during the, um, correspondence section. Okay. And so for uh, presently, no, correct? Presently, no, thank you. All right, very good. Uh, meeting open to public, uh, to the public for comments, questions. This is session one. Uh, please state your name, uh, address, and uh, speak clearly and be sure to unmute. Uh, Bill McFadden, 410 Maple. I stepped on you there, say again. Bill McFadden. 410 Maple Ave. Hello, Mr. McFadden. What can we How do we for you? All right. I'm going to start it off with uh, basically, I'm calling in to voice my frustration over the delay of a week to, for a decision on the Memorial Day parade. I, you know, I just don't seem that it's fair and hope this is an attempt to pull a vote to cancel like you did the concerts last year. Um, April 26th, I sent you the video of the governor approving the parade. Uh, and also, this was a personal email, and also uh, the Recreation Commission's decision to move forward with having the parade and asked each of the township committee members for their thoughts. I would have hoped that you could have reached out at that point and had the discussion between us instead of delaying it a week which the delay hinders the commission from going out and getting other bands, entertainment, getting a grand marshal. Uh, I just don't understand why this happened. 
And I'm also going to ask if I could be unmuted for the discussion part of this. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Um, well, uh, you, you sent that email last uh, last Monday, it looks like, and uh, we had tonight's scheduled meeting, so it seemed like the appropriate time to, to talk about it. Things are things are in motion, as we've been dealing with uh, for the last 13 months or so, so things change a lot, and there's uh, been a lot of information coming down from the county, and uh, uh, it seemed to... Um, this would be the right opportunity and the right time and place to make that uh, decision with the available information we have at this time. So uh, there was no um, no attempt to hinder the uh, the planning or scheduling. Um, I don't know what else to say there. <clears throat> I would um, like to comment, Mayor, if I could. Sure. The uh, the governor just tonight on the news said that move forward with summer activities as of May 18th. So I, I missed the last meeting. I was a little surprised that we're still discussing it. Um, I think there's a lot of support for the parade. Um, Riverside canceled theirs and they're, they're really getting beat up for that. Uh, I'm comfortable to make the motion that we approve uh, and move forward with the Memorial Day parade based on the governor's directive today. Well, we've got the uh, discussion point at the at the end on that. Do you want to deal with that then, or? Uh, we no, have I don't know what more there is to discuss, uh, Mike. I mean, it's been we've been waiting a year for the world to open. Yeah. I'll second yeah. that motion, John. You know, I mean, everybody. I got my two shots. Uh, I mean, you know, let's let's take a step here. It's. Uh, I think we can do the parade, and people still respect the six foot and the masks. I'm sorry, Kate, did, did you second that? I seconded your motion. Oh, well, that's just to add to that, we also, before you guys do anything, I also want you to understand, we, we took into consideration that Beverly and Edgewood Park canceled their parade. We took into consideration Riverside canceled theirs. We also went out and we, we have a quote because we couldn't buy them because there was no determination made. We have a quote for signs that 25 signs that's going to say, Ma mask up or separate and we bought 20 well we're going to purchase 25 of them to put at the prime issue locations which are between the 7-eleven and the bank and throughout the rest of the parade route that's what i wanted to add okay so that that was not mentioned in your email last week so um, well, I, I'm, uh, you know, um, seeing some of the data that the county put out last week, uh, our vaccination numbers, Delanco, um, something like 42% of Delanco's population has completed their vaccine courses, either one shot of the J and J or both shots of the, uh, uh Moderna or Pfizer. Um, and those numbers are significantly higher than our surrounding neighboring communities. Um, County Health has uh, been very concerned about uh, any spikes and uh, really reluctant uh, and apprehensive about uh, uh, op these reopenings and relaxing of, of uh, restrictions and so forth. Uh, the disease is still out there. The virus is still out there. It's still affecting us. The schools open, they close, they open, they close. We've got hot spots at uh, youth sporting events County is uh, contracted with a third party vendor to do on site testing at uh, weekend youth sporting events to try to get a handle on this. And it just seems, uh, as far as our responsibility as the local Board of Health, that we should not host an event or sponsor an event that uh, uh, would negate some of the gains that the community has made. So um, I'm very. Um, very apprehensive about having the parade. I think it's uh, what we did last year was a very appropriate uh, Memorial Day ceremony. And, uh, you know, next year we can have uh, the parade that uh, we've, uh, we've had in years past. But, 
it's uh, very ap apprehensive just about the, uh, doing this. Um, I don't want to have, or, you know, to explain the week after or two weeks after, you know, a rash of positives, uh, people, illnesses, and so forth. And I think, uh, you know, we have that under our control. Governor Murphy, uh, you know, he's he's got the um, He's got the, you know, what, what he's hearing at his level, but this is our responsibility at our level. And we've made some calls here locally that we uh, uh, felt and in talking to a lot of people and getting the best advice and reading the, the best information available through this past year to try to do things safely and get the information out to our community. And that's, that's our responsibility. So any other committee members want to weigh on the, in on this now? Mr. Mayor, can I just uh, go ahead. real quick? Chief, go ahead, please. Just keep in mind, if we're the only riverfront town that's going to have a parade, it's not going to be just Delanco residents that we're going to be uh, hosting. So just keep that in mind when you guys make your decision. And I think you're kind of making it all or none. Um, I don't see why a consideration can't be to postpone the parade. Still have it this year, but maybe not. Memorial Day, if that's something that can't be agreed upon. So I just wanted to throw these two things out there that it doesn't have to be either or that there might be a compromise. Yeah, 4th of July is a good day. Yeah, 4th of July is very hot. Um, yeah, I would stay away from the summer. My, yeah, my suggestion would be in the fall, like September 11th. Or... Yeah, you don't, you won't want to have it in the summer because it's hot enough. It usually is hot enough on Memorial Day. I think out of all the parades I've been, there have actually been two parades that weren't stifling. But um, I'm, I'm in favor of it. I did see the video and I've read Governor Murphy is opening more and more things. And in his video, he actually said, by all means, have your parades. Um, I understand what the chief said that maybe the other towns um, may come as well, but they may decide to have their parades after this reopening issue has come forward. So um, I am in favor of having the parade. I think it would be nice for the residents to, um, to see us. Uh, I, I, I sat on my back porch Sunday and heard a baseball game going on over at the AA field. I don't know what league that is. I believe it's the adults. Um, we have a, we have a, they have a, actually then Babe Ruth Lake this year. Okay. And, you know, my granddaughters are playing uh, softball, t-ball in Delran. You ride by our soccer fields, they're packed. You, again, you go to Target, Sam's Club, it's packed. Come on, let's, let's put, let's put a motion. I put the motion out there. Let's vote on it. And, you know, if it's no, then we know. Phil has work to do to hire these uh, bands and such. And uh, if, listen, for the public who's afraid to come out, don't come to the parade. But the ones who do come out, keep your distance from others. And uh, if you need to talk to somebody, wear a mask. We have to move on in the world. That's my opinion. And I did put a motion on there and there's a second. So I'd ask Mayor that you take a roll call. Uh, I really like the, uh, the Chief's uh, suggestion of September 11th uh, and moving the parade then uh, to that time. Uh, it's still honoring folks uh, in memory of what happened on September 11th. Uh, we can incorporate uh, the memorial of our uh, war heroes at that time. Uh, it buys a lot of time for cure and for people to get vaccinated uh, and we get through the summer months uh, I, I really like that suggestion. Uh, and if you ask me to vote on for the Memorial Day Parade, right now I would say no. Ms. Holland? Okay. Um, I am of the opinion that we should hold the parade. I think it's time. I think without um, appointments even needing to be made, at this point to get your vaccine. There's enough push that if you want it, you're gonna have it in time for the parade. And if, like John just said, it's easy enough to avoid it. 
So if you're concerned about catching COVID at this point, don't go to the parade. It's kind of just that simple. Um, I would vote to have. All right, thank you. Um, well, as I said, there's a motion on the floor and uh, Memorial Day Parade. Roll call, please. Yep, can't hear Janice. Okay, motion by Mr. Brown, second by Ms. Fitzpatrick to move forward and improve the holding of the Memorial Day Parade. Um, Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. No. Mr. Templeton. No, I, uh, I, I'm dreading this. I, uh, I, I um, really, I'm gonna dread this. So it's, uh, I just hope that, uh, our community is safe coming out the other side. So, no. And Mayor, we are still in the um, open public session, session one. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Mike. Uh, can I make a comment? Uh, Peter Fritz uh, calling uh, 303 Union Avenue. Um, I'm, um, I, I'm pleased that we're going forward with the parade, and I hope that uh, that people will um, heed whatever um, situations, you know, whatever limitations that we're putting there. Um, people holding, uh, staying in family groups, um, masking if it's a, a larger group. Uh, the the number of people that come to the parade were spread out over what almost a mile, um, and most people are you know, up on their lawns and that kind of thing. I, I, I understand that there are clusters in certain places and, and maybe that will need to be monitored um, more heavily than, uh, than usual. Uh, we did uh, consider about the parade as far as the history board. And we decided that if the, if the parade was going to be held, that we were going to go forward, even though there were several members that said that they preferred not to participate this year. So, um, I, I think that uh, um, I think it, it's probably a good decision to, to go forward as long as people understand that, that there are going to be some uh, some restrictions to uh, um, to the thing as a participants and, and spectators. Thank you. Any other comments? From that? Yeah, Mike, Matt Barth at 1800 Second Street. On your, you mentioned uh, before that uh, youth sports are a hot spot. Uh, on behalf of DISA, we have had zero cases, zero cases of COVID throughout our program this year, which has been in, in operation for the last month with baseball, softball, and t ball. We have games going on tonight. We've had games the last couple of weeks, practices, and a very round number of zero cases of. Uh, COVID. So saying that youth sports is a hot spot, not in Delanco, maybe in other communities where they're not following safe practices, but our town, our youth, our coaches, and our parents have been acting in a safe manner. That's all I got, Mike. Thank you. No, good information. No, the county information, uh, that's been a big concern the last uh, month and a half since things, uh, since spring has arrived, and uh, they haven't broken it down uh, uh, some of it's been school activities and they've, uh, there's been a little discretion on as far as identifying those schools and so forth. Um, but uh, that is, it is a hotspot and the county has retained a third party vendor to go out on site with mobile testing uh, to try to get a handle on this and uh, uh, reinforce uh, safety protocols uh, that uh, are easy to, uh, to forget about. But uh, that's good news that, uh, and I wish uh, good continued success there. Any other comments from the public? All I right. have a comment to Matt. I believe we also had soccer this year with no problems. Right, in the uh, 2020, the end of 2020, uh, from right. end of September we started till I'm gonna say middle of December. It's been a while, right. I don't remember the exact end, but yeah, we had uh, the whole season went off without a hitch, no cases. All right, any other comments please from the public? 
Hearing none, I'll close this uh, comment and question session of the meeting is now closed the public comments and reports. Uh, professionals, let's see, Mr. Fox. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm, I'm gonna uh, report on my, on my typical items and there's also a couple items on the discussion uh, part of the agenda that I'll, that I'll touch base on as well. Uh, the 2020 road program um, the paving uh, of lilac is, is done in spruce. Walters, the base course is down, and they're going to be installing the top course, the surface course. Um, it's scheduled for Thursday, weather permitting. Um, so by the end of this week, that should be final paved, um, which would complete the project out of the, other than punch list item. Um, the uh, 2021 uh, road program, uh, we did actually receive uh, comments from the state today um, after I, I wrote my report. Uh, there are very minor comments, which we're gonna, gonna address, so it should be no issue. And we're on schedule to hopefully award at the, um, the uh, June 14th uh, township meeting for, for that project. That's the uh, DOT project for, um, uh, uh, let's see, it's, um, Second River's Edge and Third. Correct. Second um, from Lilac to the Colzac and River's Edge. Uh, Third Street is the, the local uh, funds. Thank you, Richard. Um, Reading your report. Yep. Thank you. Um, the Zubro Gussie Seawall, I, I did uh, meet again with, uh, well, a Zoom meeting with. Uh, the DOT officials, um, the assistant he commissioner, is. and his staff. Um, and as we noted, as I noted before, the assistant commissioner had indicated that we could put the seawall back in the original location. Um, his staff is not in agreement with that. Um, so we're kind of uh, going back and forth with that issue at that point, at, at this point. Um, I'm still working on it, trying to, to, to get them to allow us to put it on the in the, in the in the old location of the seawall um but again that the staff is kind of uh not so much in favor of doing that um the newton's landing head wall um i finished the uh the design plans the plan for that is to do it as, as an emergency um repair the provisions by DEP that we're allowed to do that, and then we just go back to them after the after the fact and get the, the permit. Um, I sent plans out to three contractors, um, three contractors that, that that we deal with in town, um, and one of them is is uh, Pearson who is doing the Greenway Trail, so they're right there as well. Once we get quotes back from those contractors, um, I can review that, review that with Richard, and um, we can take the next step if, if the committee wants to go that route. Um, the, uh, that, that's all I have on my normal report. The discussion items, we have DOT uh, uh, fiscal year 2022 grant is due July 1st. Um, so we have time on that, but I just wanted to get everyone thinking about it. And my recommendations for streets would, would be for that. Um, would be to which we already applied for in past grants, but we haven't used it. Uh, the first block of Maple Avenue from Burlington Avenue, uh, the, the first block in uh, that would complete Maple Avenue. We, we reconstructed the, the, the lower two blocks a few years ago. Um, we could also do Vine Street uh, in its entirety from well from Burlington Avenue to uh, Delaware um, with that grant. So typically they give out anywhere from 240 to $260,000 for, for the grants. Um, we would have enough money to, to do both of those projects. It would receive that amount. Um, so that's something that um, you, you can either authorize me to go with those roads, or if you want, I can meet with John and Richard um, as we did in the past and review it and come back with our recommendations for, for your next meeting. Uh, again, there's still time for that one. Here are they the next roads that were in line when you and John sat down and compiled that list. 
and how we would repair the roads? Are they the next ones in line? I don't have that package in front of me. They are. Um, we've been putting off. Vine was supposed to be actually two years ago, and that got put off for other streets. Um, so we're coming back to that. And the same thing with Maple. Um, so they are ones that we've, we've already planned on doing, but they got put off for, for doing other work. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, why don't you get with uh, Richard and fill some of that and, and get, get a good list for us for the 17th. No problem. Uh, the second thing is the BCA recreational grant. Um, we're trying to get a handle on what would be an optimum amount of money to apply for or, or what we think that they will give out because there's only 2.5 million for the whole state. Um, my gut feeling is about 150,000, but we are, we have contacted DCA and we're trying to get something out of them to, to, to let us know, you know what, what kind of ballpark area we would be in for, for funding. Um, with that being said, uh, as we discussed last uh, meeting that I was at um, and, and Richard's email, uh, we, have, we had four projects uh, listed originally and I added a fifth one, um, which is uh, the, the Memorial Field, the A field, AA fields. Uh, I know John and I have been talking about that for years. That's basically built on swamp. Um, it's it's very wet. There's always issues there. John has problem mowing it, whatnot. Um, now that we're redoing the Hickory Street drainage system, uh, we can now do an under drain system in the field, which would drain the drain the field and it would um, flow into the storm sewer. So I added that on there just for your consideration. Um, so what we basically have, and I, and I sent the email out, um, I hope everyone had a chance to, to at least uh, peruse it. Um, the first item would be the Field of Dreams irrigation system. I, I, and, and I know that, that, that it isn't a plan to irrigate the all-purpose field, but, and, and that really wouldn't be a good candidate, but um, we, we could replace the well and upgrade the controller, which would solve all the past problems we had with watering and dry spots and um and we're also you'd also get a new well for, for the existing well is probably about uh eight or nine years old so so that would qualify um the resurfacing of the basketball courts that would qualify as well um obviously that's we, what we do is we would mill off the surface course and, and restripe it or recode it and restripe it and, and bring it back to new condition uh, the uh, asphalt path that was part of the Cooper Town Road sidewalk plan. Uh, it runs from Newton's Landing Boulevard um, all the way up to Field of Dreams and connects into the county path that's still in Pennington Park. Um, that would qualify, and I think that's a, that's probably a, a, the best choice we have here. Um, it, it gets access to the athletic fields from from downtown. Um, it also acts as a, as, a, as a trail for people to walk. And, and that's what the grant is really getting geared towards is, is to get people outside and exercising after this COVID pandemic. That seems to be the, that, that follows along Creek Road there, right? Yep. Yeah, that would seem to be the best. I mean, that's, that's been, you know, a wish list item on, you know, various master plans and county plans and DVRPC. And it, it's, it's, it hits all the right, uh, hits all the right buttons there. It, it uh, does, and, and I, I, I agree, and it, I think that's our, our, our best project for this grant. The price tag, it's, maybe, <laughs> we could do a road for that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's a lot of site clearing, and uh, it's, a, it's a considerable length. It is, yeah. Harry, do we have private residence or private property that we have to deal with with that particular sidewalk? I, I don't know. Um, hundred percent, but I don't, I don't believe we will have any issues. We, we have enough right away that we can fit it in there. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so what we can do is we can, and as I mentioned before, this is a very competitive grant and you're going to have to do matching funds. If you, if you don't do matching funds of some type, odds are you're not going to, to receive anything. Um, so with that being said, 
we could do probably two of these projects. Um, I would recommend combining two of these, which would be the path and, and one of the other improvements um, to apply for, and then have the township, and we can work out the exact numbers. It doesn't have to be a 50-50 a match. It can be any match you want. So we can kind of work out the numbers with what we have in our budget to, to show the, um, that the township is participating in the, in the funding. Just my input on it, if you look at the other ones, number one, we do have money set aside for sidewalk work, which we could apply to this. It was, I think, intended for uh, Coopertown, but we could also apply it towards Creek. And uh, we do have funds that we could apply towards the Field of Dreams irrigation uh, that we have budgeted. The uh, basketball court, that was one of the ones that was asked for for county open space money. We didn't have enough money to do the lawn and that. So it would seem to me that would be next up for that. But we have talked about maybe using doing gateway instead. So in terms of your priorities, um, the environmental cleanup is probably, I think, the lowest one. And we also have budgeted funds for that. And the under drain for Memorial Field is new, so I can't uh, comment. But there is some uh, balance of monies. We got very good bids for the hickory drainage, and hopefully the uh, outfall money. We can do the emergency work on the Newtonsland outfall, perhaps for less than what was budgeted. So that might there might be monies that could be allocated out of the capital fund because it's a drainage project, uh, perhaps that we can use for that. So depending on, uh, I don't know what what area you think the breakdown ought to be between uh, grant funds and uh, local match, whether you're talking 50-50 or 60-40 or 70-30, what do you think they might expect? Well, in any case, we usually always pay for engineering out of our funds. So we tell them that we need, you know, 116,000 for the path, but we're already gonna probably spend the 16,000 for engineering. So how much of the 100,000 we would have to support, you know, maybe 40% of that or 30% of that. So I don't know what which ones, whether you put the path and the irrigation, because they're both tied to Field of Dreams, or you tie in the Memorial Field things, if you want to do the basketball court and the under drains as two items, because they're in the same field. I don't know what, what you think makes sense. Harry, on the, on the Babe Ruth Field drainage, I mean, that's that was a swamp, as you said. It was a it was an intermittent pond. I mean, old maps going way back. Um, how low can we go? And is that going to need a pump to to make that functional? I, I, I again, I don't know, but it, it appears that we should be able to do it by gravity because it can be actually flat. It doesn't have to have any 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 slope to the pipe. So, I I, I think we can get it done by gravity, and and I wouldn't anticipate a pump. Harry, is this grant uh, $1.5 million for the whole state? Yeah, it's yeah. about $2.5 million for the whole state. Well, that's nothing. Exactly. And the maximum they say that you can apply for is $500,000. Um, I know of one township that is applying for $500,000. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine they would get that, but. Not a lot of money to go around 565 municipality. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Well, definitely the, I think the trail, uh, the connector uh, to Field of Dreams in Pennington is, is definitely in there. Um, I, I would add the resurface and recoat the basketball courts because it's an active event. Uh, you know, it's, it's an active um, recreational um, facility. This says resurface and recoat basketball courts at Memorial Field. Well, Memorial Field is the AA field, uh, really. Oh, yeah. I have to oh, okay. the Memorial Field, but it's the AA field. Yeah, I apologize for that. That's, that's why I call it Memorial Field. Yeah, it's the AA field, John. So I, I would include that. Memorial Ed. Yeah, I would include those two items. And I don't know, Richard, how much we would have to, do you have to say it in the application, Harry? But I wouldn't want to contribute yeah. 
25% if we could. Yes, you do have to put in application what amount that you're going to contribute. I would say 25%, the lowest amount we could contribute. <laughs> That'd be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. They what may come you... back with a counter offer, but you know. Uh, yeah, there is. there really is no counter offers. It's either you, okay. you, you receive the grant or not. Well, in good faith, I would offer 25%. That's my suggestion. And to do this two and three. Do think they want half? They want half? Eric? They, we're trying to feel them out because the, right. it, it's, not a, it's, it's not a policy. It just scores you more points for the more money that you put in. So it's kind of one of those things that you kind of weigh the, the benefits versus what it's cost you. Um, I, I want to get our hopes up. We're start. We're finally starting to see money for roads from DOT, and we didn't see that for years. And two and a half million dollars for the whole state through the DCA. DCA hasn't offered up much at all. Um, so, Delanco has always been like just looked over year after year. We were trying to get things for this town, but little Delanco, they just ignore. So, let's not get our Mr. Mayor. Up. Mike? Eric. Who, who's speaking? Mike? Oh. It's John Fenimore. John. Oh, John. Hello, John. John Fenimore. Uh, why, why are we paving uh, an access to um, the Field of Dreams? Isn't the county putting in a nice new walkway that they want everybody to go out on? Well, it's it's and it's that's going it's out second, to Pennington and into our field. It's the second access to it. Um, the Greenway Trail goes along the Rancocas and then loops up behind uh, uh, traditions and then cuts across. Well, you know where it goes. And then right, right. the second, uh, basically a bike path that uh, would be a street and sidewalk access that would connect along Cooper Street, Coopertown Road and Creek Road. But I mean, if I was a bicyclist, I think I would be going, instead of trying to go down uh, Coopertown and Creek Road, I'd be going along the creek. I'm just saying it's a, it's a lot of money to put out when we're kind of duplicating it. Um, you know, just a thought. Appreciate the, the, the comments there, John. Thank you. No, I think it's, I think it's, it's a valid, uh, valid route i mean it's it's been a priority sidewalks uh, trails bikeways that's that's uh something everything is communities are all uh investing in so what harry you were talking about two two pro two proposals you know in either or um to as far as packaging these together i mean say the 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 Item three, asphalt path is one, and then bundle maybe the drainage, uh, AA field, Babe Ruth field drainage with the uh, the basketball courts and bundle those two together. Yeah, I, I, would, I would bundle two projects together, whatever they may be. Um, and, and we're still dealing with DCA to, to find out if they want us to prioritize okay. two different projects or just, just give them the, you know, both project is one and. All right. That's it. We'll see. We'll see what information you get back from them as far as what uh, combination or not. If if they just want if they want the cherry that we want, uh, you know the, the best proposal and the single project, then that's what we'll give them. But see see what uh, we, you can get from your uh, your inquiries. Yeah. Tonight, though, uh, Mayor, because you have to adopt the resolution authorizing the application at your next meeting. You might want to see if there could be some agreement on a priority, you know, one through five on this list so that once he finds that information, you know, he's going to put it together, send us an email, and you're going to have a resolution on your agenda on the 17th, and you're going to have to fish or cut bait then. All right. Uh, I'll go around the table. Uh, one, two, three, top three priorities. Uh, Kate? Two, three, and... Five. In that order, correct? No, three would be my number one. Oh, okay. And then, and then two, and then right. five. 
John? Um, two, three, and we didn't really talk about number four, but I think we should throw some, you know, start to bundle up some cash toward that project. So two, three, four in that order. So two. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Chris? I would say two, three, and five in that order. Fern? Two, three, five. In that order, in that rank order? Uh, yes. All right. And uh, for my two cents, uh, uh, number three is number one, number five is number two, and number two is number three. Um, good luck, Harry. Right. So it looks like just two, three, five are what you're going to try to see how to bundle and make yeah. a recommendation. Yep. Mm -hmm. What's next, Harry? Oh, uh, that's all I have. Quick, um, Mayor, Harry, uh, did you see the resolution? I went on, I've been going on that website and it says the forms are there, the documents are there, but I do not see. A particular uh, a template for the resolution. Have you seen anything? Um, I haven't personally, but I know we have one in the office. We, we have um, someone taking care of these grants for for several townships. Okay. Is it something that um, you can forward to me? Absolutely. Thank yep. you. Hey. Anything else, Harry? That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. And anybody have anything for Mr. Fox? All right, thank you. Thanks for the good work. Uh, let's see. Oh, Harry, last item. Uh, I don't know if you caught it the mid afternoon today. Uh, Janice had forwarded a, a correspondence on a question on part of that trail. Um, uh, the Rancocas tra uh, trail, uh, the thing that's been on, we've been dealing with the last couple months. Um, I sent it to Steve Lennon and I guess he's out in the out in the in the field today, but I didn't get a response, but it's that small connector that splits between two of the houses on Pennington. And it looks like from the zoning maps, that's part of, that's county, that's the county property. So right. I think the question was from the resident, whether that would be paved or if that's gonna be a cinder trail, like I believe most of the rest of it is. Uh, I, I know that the original plans called for that just to be cinder, not, not to be paved. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's been any revisions or, or field adjustments yeah. at this time, but yeah, I uh, I'm out of town, uh, a couple thousand miles away, and couldn't get access to the plans to to take a look to see what what what. I'll, that I'll, Mike, I'll take a look tomorrow. But Steve Lennon is the right guy. He was the yeah. designer, so yep. I think he's the one we're going to hear back from. But I'll I'll take a look in the morning when I'm in the office. Yeah, we'll see what he comes back with. I didn't know if you had a chance to take a look. All right, thank you. Um, let's see, next, uh, Council Administrator, Mr. Schwab. Yeah, a couple minor things. First of all, you have your budget public hearing at your next meeting on the 17th. I will not be here, but Rob will be on line for any questions. Uh, one thing to note is we received a notice from the Division of Local Government Services due to the large volume of public hearings scheduled for May. When a budget examiner is assigned, we'll get an email notification. We have to have it reviewed by the state this year every third year. A municipality's public hearing must occur as scheduled, but no action may be taken until the division completes the review. So it is possible that Rob might not hear, in the old days, we used to hear it uh, two minutes before your meeting started, that it's okay to adopt. So there is a slim possibility that because they're too big to get to us, that you'll have your public hearing, but you may not be able to adopt, you may have to postpone it to the next meeting. So that'll create some operational problems for us and delay a few things, but uh, it's it's not that critical. And uh, the other thing is that I sent on to a couple of people, speaking of that trail, never thought this county trail project was gonna be so involved with so much, but it does. Uh, our good friend, the pipe man, happens to be right in the way of a connection between the station and the project. And so they need to move it. They wanna move it over to the left if you're looking from the rank focus, slightly over. And I, I sent that around. I don't know, 
the question is, I know Peter's on here and John Fenimore's on here. Who makes that decision? I think we gave that to Cornerstone, but we still own it. But does anyone really care if they've got to move it 10 feet over? We really gave up any authority over that when you guys took that over. So that's what I thought. We don't really have an opinion. Yeah. So it's it's to move it over to here. If they need another one, we can give them a matching one. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> but does it's, anyone see any reason why they we shouldn't say it's okay to move it ten feet over? It's. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Also. Yeah. I mean, no problem. If no objections, then it's approved. Thank you. Hey, it's got legs. He can walk himself. <laughs> <laughs> we we told them they have to uh, pin him in the ground. They said. No, no, no. They said the same thing. He walks himself. Oh. All right. Thank you. I'm done. Oh, that was quick. Uh, let's see, department heads. Uh, let's start off with uh, Chief DeSanto. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a couple of things. Or actually, it's a couple of things all, all related to the same. Uh, I'm trying to address an issue with the truck traffic staging on Coopertown Road in front of the 1000 block of Coopertown um, to gain entry into Enterprise. Our last meeting, I believe a resident, Mr. Martin, had brought it to our attention. And, um, and I, since then, I've received a couple more complaints about it and even some photographs. So the two-pronged attack, uh, we uh, reached out to the county about an evaluation on their road. Uh, they're in agreement that there shouldn't be any parking for trucks. Uh, the intent of that shoulder was never for truck parking. And so they agreed and so, um, doesn't seem like there's going to be any pushback in terms of if we pass an ordinance to address that. So that leads me to uh, the ordinance. The ordinance initially uh, was going to just focus on that area, but Ms. Lohr had, you know, reminded me of the, you know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the building of the Dolan uh, warehouse project, and there's going to be additional potential projects going on regarding warehouses. So with that in, in mind, uh, my change to the ordinance and request the ordinance be changed to include Coopertown Road from the township line to Tungsten uh, Place, which is the road that runs between the Public Works building and, um, and Stylex. So, the, um, so that's with the ordinance. I got an update from the uh, county today from the engineer, and he actually informed me there's a little bit of a different process, which is good news for us. He's only requesting a copy of the sealed ordinance once it's, once it's done. Uh, he said he is there no need for him to submit it to the commissioners for a county resolution. The, the ordinance can stand on its own. And once the statute uh, uh, occurs where we can start enforcing it, we're more than welcome to start enforcing it. So the county uh, left it in our hand, hands. He agreed. Uh, that he would recommend for the entire stretch that we are going to propose a ordinance to be no truck or no parking uh, because there's a potential for trucks uh, staging anywhere among those, you know, potentially three different warehouse locations. And um, not all warehouses are 24 seven, some are 16 hours a day. So you have truck drivers coming in from out of state looking for a place to park. And then we could have trucks stacking up um, three times is uh, three times as worse as we do right now, just in Coopertown. And the other prong attack on uh, the problem of Coopertown and Enterprise Drive, 1030 or more, I have a meeting scheduled with the, the representatives of Misfits, NVR, and RLS, and Stanker Gangletto, and Gangletto, in reference to the um, Enterprise Drive. We're running into some problems about the parking signs. There's been a delay, so there's been a delay in enforcement. So I'm going to get them together and uh, try to figure out what is the problem that's causing them to park on Enterprise. So we can get to that problem and come up with a solution. And then, um, and then when the signs come up, there won't be any trucks to worry about to enforce. Because uh, we're probably looking probably at least a week, maybe two weeks before the signs come up. Um, they uh, are going to be ordered, they got to be made, they got to come in, they got to get marked out for utilities to make sure our public works guys are driving 
um, signpost into electrical lines and cable lines and co coaxial and fiber optic lines. So there's gonna be some time. So I, I wanna take the time to address this with them and see if we can resolve it even before the signs come up. But uh, the signs and the enforcement will be a last, last resort. So um, that's, that's it, unless you have any questions regarding the signs on enterprise or the uh, ordinance regarding- Jesse, can I make a comment yeah, on the yeah. signs? My comment is I'm the financial guy. They needed my authorization to purchase them. They're 60 bucks a piece plus installation. Uh, so it's $1,500 just for enterprise. When we talk about uh, Cooper, Cooperstown Road, which is a lot longer stretch, we're talking about 26 signs, I think, on Enterprise. I don't know how many we need for that, but perhaps they become enforceable when the signs are up. Perhaps you adopt the ordinance, and then we just sign the areas that are problems when they come up rather than spend thousands of dollars on signs for areas that are not problems yet. It gives us the opportunity to put up signs whenever we need them. It's my thoughts. Because we don't have any money budgeted for this, so we got to find it somewhere. Question: Does the county, uh, being it's county road, should they be providing the signs? Uh, they they preempted you, uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Olet, and they said they we will wish. not be providing or putting up any parking signs. Um, it's it's our ordinance, so we're responsible for the signs. And we asked, they laughed. Maybe we could just um, put them separate, have have longer distances between them to only order half of what you need. Um, well, Enterprise Drive, I, I, I don't know because uh, you give an inch, they're going to take a mile. That's what I've learned from meeting with those companies. Um, so I think that's why they're parking on Cooperstown is because Enterprise has been shut off to them. No, no. That, that's, I, thought that, I thought that too, Kate. And they're still I, I got there. some reports oh. back that there's still parking trailers in Enterprise. So, you know, that's why I want to act quickly on Cooperstown because once we choke out the actual Enterprise Drive, there's, you know, there's more potential for even more truck staging on Cooperstown if we don't have it regulated. So um, they're still, you know, they're still, you know, I would say bluntly ignoring, there's no signs there, but they're still parking on Enterprise Drive uh, trailers full and empty. And so, um, and I, and like I said, I, I want to find out why they're parking on Enterprise Drive and not on their own property. Right. Um, but no, I actually thought that too, Kate, but I got the uh, officers checking over the weekend and there was trailers parked on Enterprise Drive the whole weekend. Mm. Problem is the trailers, the trucks that come in, they're third party contractors or independents. They are not the employees of those respective entities. And so, they really don't have any control over them as far as you know, um, distributing information to them or something, uh, at least easily. And that uh, is, is creating this, this problem that we're trying to get our hands around. Uh, um, I don't know, again, it's, it's, it's spending money, but I don't know if uh, you know, striping the, uh, the curb, I mean, the signs, as you say, Chief, the truckers are going to be pulling in there at O dark thirty and, and hanging around until uh, opening hours. Um, the signs may not be visible until you know dawn's early light. Um, I don't know they're reflective a, and they have headlights. That's yeah, and they they're parked there during the day. They're not parked yeah, there. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, right. that's, you know, truckers, you know, they're uh, they show up for their loads early in the morning and and, and idle sitting idle there. Um, you know, maybe uh, if sometime down the road, get the money, you know, stripe out the curbing, you know, uh, paint that, that yellow. Um, and and uh, it's just- And then you have to maintain that. That's kind of hard. It's not yeah. legal. It's, yellow is not legally enforced, enforceable. Yeah. The signs, know. that's why the chief points out, he's got to distance them so that nobody can claim that they couldn't see them because of X, Y, and Z. Because mm -hmm. uh, the enforcement, they, they'll issue the tickets and whether they'll actually show up in court to challenge them is the question. Maybe not them because they're out of town, but uh, that's how we look at it when we do enforcement. But right, no, I was just commenting for when we talk about Cooperstown. That well, yeah, we Cooperstown, I actually think those. Richard's idea is, 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 you know, let's, I mean, we don't have to go buy every single sign for Cooperstown right away. 
what I would do is if we do pass this ordinance for Coopertown, we'll place them in front of RLS on Coopertown Road. Right. Then, then when Nolan's developed, then we'll purchase signs for that area. Right. So, you know, and they're going to be spaced out like 100 feet apart. Uh, so Enterprise, just so you know, they're, they're spaced approximately 60 foot apart. Uh, they're not every 10 feet. So there's, you know, it's like uh, uh, approximately a tractor trailer's distance apart. And then some, I think tractor trailers usually 50 feet long. So, so that's the, uh, that, that's been taking up most of my uh, week and that's what I'm reporting on. So any other questions? Uh, yes, Chief, uh, and Kate might want to chime in on this one. Uh, and we have John Fenimore online. Uh, this has to do with stop signs on Third Street and Cedar, and I think it's uh, Cedar and Vine. Uh, it's some Third Street. It's Third Street and Vine. Third and Vine. Third and Vine. And uh, I, I already sent Jesse an email about that. He's going to evaluate that particular stop sign. Yeah, we're, um, we're gonna, I'm sorry, sorry, to, I didn't bring that up. Kate asked me to bring it up to the committee. Yes, uh, the request was to evaluate that and I told her I would get to it this week and report back to the committee what my recommendation is. Uh, we have a meeting on the 17th. Uh, so uh, I should have a, a response or a recommendation prior to the 17th. So if, um, if there is a stop sign to go on there, we can put it, start the process on that agenda. On our list of stop signs, wasn't Third Street uh, the whole length of Third Street supposed to have stop signs, or am I missing? No, it's, I think it's regulated by intersection. So, you know, one I got to check the code book to see if if a sign, stop sign was ever approved for there. And then, you know, if it is, then I just contact John and ask him to order a sign and put it up. But if there was never a sign listed in the schedule under the, um, the traffic regulation, mm -hmm. then we have to add it to that schedule. Okay. Yeah, I, I think there were some other intersections that uh, some folks had uh, asked about stop signs. Oh, again, along 3rd Street. That's along 3rd Street? Okay. There's a lot of stop signs there already. Are there? Yeah. You got them all the way down. You got yeah, they have them on the down streets. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want four-way stops. Oh, no, 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 no yeah. four-way stops. Yeah. Okay. Well, Fern, if you have anything other than Vine and Third, email me, and then then I'll evaluate them and let you know. Okay. Uh, well, the other one was Cedar, I thought, is what Cedar. Uh, okay. The individual. Uh, had yeah, yeah, I thought well, there where, was where, one there, but I'll, I'll where do you want to put them on Third and Vine? You want to put them on Third or put them on Vine? On Third, when they're coming out of Third Street onto Vine, yeah. they're just whipping around that corner and really they they're not stopping at a corner you okay. think they would but yeah yeah it's a t intersection and the vine street's actually a two-way street from third down to yeah. uh the cedar i mean right. to the orchard yeah i stop everywhere <laughs> i stop at green lights sometimes <laughs> One of the attorneys I work well, with. Well, these side streets, I don't trust any of them. I, yeah. I already got. I agree with you, John. That's the best practice. Yeah. I guess it needs yeah. nice and slow. Anything else, Chief? Uh, I'll, I'll just bring this up while I got my time. Um, I just want to make this on the record so the committee knows and understands what the the prosecutor's office is training the officers regarding this uh, decriminalization of marijuana, and I just uh, want to share this so you understand if. One of your constituents comes up to you and say, well, you know, I had this issue with someone smoking marijuana um, in the backyard of my neighbor's house, or I had this issue with this person walking down the street smoking marijuana. Um, just remind them it's tobacco. It's, you know, it's the same as tobacco now. And, you know, as per our training, may an officer initiate or continue a pedestrian stop of an individual based on the officer detecting the odor of marijuana? The answer is no. New law is clear that the odor of marijuana, either burned or raw, by itself does not establish reasonable suspicion to justify or continue a stop. In addition, the odor of marijuana by itself does not establish probable cause to conduct a search 
in a marijuana possession case or even a law, low level fourth degree possession with intent to distribute marijuana case. Age of the person being stopped is relevant to these situations. So that, that's what we're being trained. And so if we get a call about someone smoking marijuana, you know, we're gonna try to educate the caller and uh, advise them that it's not, it's not illegal. And they don't want us approaching people just based on the odor of marijuana. All right, I just want to, so you know where we're being trained to do and where we're coming from, in case you have any questions about that. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Fenimore, are you still on? Yes, I'm still on. You hear me? Yes. Hi, John. Um, how's everybody doing? Um, we uh, um, we cut the all the the properties that the township owns three times. Um, we finally got to cut uh, West Avenue Trail. I finally got it done today. So the whole trail has been done uh, once at least. Uh, just trying to keep up with everything, um, you know, with one guy being out and he's back today. So um, it's a big help trying to uh, continue on. You know, we went through leaf season, the spring cleanup that went well. Uh, brush, we kind of struggled last week. I had a couple guys out and uh, well, we got through it. <clears throat> um been lying in the ball fields, trying to keep on to the schedules. Uh, we've been delivering compost and mulch, which we are officially out now. So, um, turned the leaves uh, one time. Uh, we had a cleanup. Um, we had the TVs and uh, we had two dumpsters and we only filled one dumpster. Um, so that wasn't too good, but uh, we had a 40 yard dumpster with a, a metal and electronic stuff. And we about three quarters of that. And like I said, we had 106 tires dropped off and get the word around next year. Um, somebody had a good idea, which uh, I hated to turn them down and I didn't, but they fished 30 tires out of the river that had the rims on that were full of mud and water and the uh, county will not take these tires. They must be washed. So anybody uh, that ever asked you uh, about getting rid of tires, if they're gonna pull them out of the river, which they are very good to do, but uh, we, uh, we will have trouble getting rid of them. So we have to comply what they tell us to do. The recycling grants done and the stormwater grants done. Um, and also the, the hickory uh, uh, drainage problem. Um, that, that's a really good idea. And I think uh, it would help uh, keep the water table down there. Uh, if we put like a French drain in, like Harry said, right out to the street, we put two or three uh, lines with uh, holes in them and they, you know, and they, there's a stone base, and then it goes right into the stormwater, which will help uh, a lot of the people that, you know, upstream there uh, that have water in their cellar. So that's another very good project to do. And we've been running around crazy, delivering Beverly Lees, uh, you name it, we've been doing it. Uh, people missing trash and uh, uh, people not putting uh, the brush out right, just throwing it out, and uh, uh, it's been very challenging, but uh, we're doing uh, pretty good, and I'm proud of my guys. That's all I have. Thank you, John. Very nice. Thank you. Well done. Uh, administration, Mrs. Lohr. Yes, I have three things. The first thing is um, the 24th of April was the townwide yard sale. It was, uh, we had several people sign up. It was a nice day, very successful. I believe the uh, EMS and fire sold out of their hoagies. So it was uh, reported to be a very nice day. 
The second thing is uh, June 8th is the primary election and Governor Murphy has reported that it will be primarily in person on voting machines. So um, all six districts will be up and running for this primary election on June 8th. And um, I just wanted to report that. And then the third thing is that we've had another member of our administrative staff uh, successfully complete a certification, the Department of Community Affairs uh, Construction Assistant Program. Erin McFadden uh, took the classes and passed her test and is now a certified uh, construction assistant under the DCA guidelines. Great. That's what I have. Very good. Congratulations, Erin. That is huge. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Great, great uh, asset and resource for the for the for the township. Anything else, Mrs. Lore? Uh, I'll just have correspondence later. Thank okay. you. Mayor. All right, uh, consent agenda items, consent agenda are considered. Mayor, Mayor. Mayor be before we move on. Who's, who's can, I, can everybody hear me or am I? John, I can, I can John hear John Brown. Yeah, you're. I'm kind of breaking up, I don't know. Losing my internet or Go something. Go ahead, John. All right, I don't know if you can hear me, but just uh, to the chief, um, you know what? I'm frozen up. I'm going to save this issue for next, uh, next meeting. Okay. Has to do with, uh, um, those, uh, stop signs and the traffic flow. Um, something I observed, but I'll wait. John, we can hear you. Okay. Even though your screen is frozen. Okay. Uh, I just chief while you're, while you're looking at these stop signs, I, I observed uh, last week, the traffic uh, <coughs> coming across uh, Cooper Street onto Edgewood Avenue. And um, it's it just a one solid line of traffic going across. And I think people were rushing to see the sunset or, uh, but it's just a thoroughfare. And I've also seen trucks go straight across, get lost back there. I would like the committee to consider making uh, Edgewood uh, one way coming out from the river. I think that would solve a lot of problems. There's been problems at Third Street and Edgewood uh, with speeders and the residents there are, have not been happy for years. It's just something that I hope this committee uh, keeps in the back of their mind um, when I'm not here. Thank you. John, is that where the light is? Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. Yes. Hmm. So there is a traffic. Just, just think about it. Check it yeah. out. Okay. All right. Thanks for the. Um, thanks for pointing that out, John. All right. Consent agenda items. Consent agenda are considered mm -hmm. to be routine. Be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Uh, is there any item or any questions or any any item on the consent uh, that any? committee member would like to discuss or have considered separately. All right, the one, um, I do have a question on the business licenses. Um, what's the, when is the expiration of the current year licenses? Is that currently expired or, or is it? Yeah, Mayor, these licenses are for 2021, the calendar year 2021. Well, so it's calendar year. All right. I have a question for the for the business licenses for Duncan and uh, what's that 7-Eleven maybe the ones with the sore issues. Yeah. What's going to happen next? I, I understand we have a tenuous enforceability issue, but I mean they're what three four quarters behind now. So what happens? Yeah, the, uh, I called the uh, landlord and uh, once again left another message um, and uh, I'll continue to follow up on that. He, uh, when I spoke to him a couple weeks ago on some of the condition issues that uh, the parking lot and the general shabbiness of the building, he was uh, sounded uh, um, in agreement and uh, was going to be compliant. And uh, uh, but that uh, is seems to be a continuing pattern of. Uh, of this property owner. So we may so, need to move into uh, 
some other legal issues uh, to get compliance here on on other things. So does it become like a small claims matter? Like, do we take them to court? No, no. Sewer, yeah. the, the sewage authority can handles that and nothing else that goes on tax sale. Right. So, it, so that's that's handled the the sewer the lack of sewer payment is handled through other mechanisms. Doesn't need any further action by the governing body. Right. And we can't withhold their license because correct. And so I mean, we can't withhold them. Um, I did have a question about the camp meeting ground code enforcement. I guess I'll bring it up under discussion items because I have another discussion item too that I want to bring up. So should I wait since we're doing consent agenda now? I'll wait. All right. All right, so I'll continue with consent agenda. Ordinance 2021-10, amending chapter 295, governing vehicles and parking, no parking sections at Cooperstown Road. Uh, this is first reading by title only and set public hearing date for May 17th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Payment of bills, uh, count current fund, $1,266,330.12, payroll, $97,000, and thirty-three cents. Capital eighty three thousand seven hundred eighty three dollars and sixty six cents escrow trust one hundred fifty dollars even housing trust three hundred seventy five dollars ninety one cents municipal open space ten thousand one hundred sixty five dollars and ninety eight cents approval of minutes uh, April twelfth twenty twenty one business licenses twenty twenty one dash seventeen through twenty twenty one dash thirty one uh, approval of the consent agenda please motion. So, so move. Second. Uh, I think Kate got that one first and John got the second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Olatz? Yes. And Mr. Templeton? Yes. Thank you. Uh, meetings now open to the public for comments, questions, session two. Uh, please state your name and your address and unmute yourself. Questions or comments from the public? I just want to ask because I don't see it on. Well, let me check the chat. The chat is empty. All right. Hearing and seeing no comments or questions from the public. Uh, comment question section of the meeting is now closed to the public. Uh, correspondence, Mrs. Lord. Uh, yes, I have several. Um, the first one is an email from William Horner at 301 Poplar Street and uh, expressing his uh, opinion on the cannabis. And he is against the sale or use of cannabis in Delanco since uh, we are a dry town for alcohol. We received, um, next thing is from the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. This one was received today. It's um, the next round of Green Acres grants application is uh, due June 30th for uh, Green Acres applications for open space and recreational grants. The third is a letter received from Amber Perlmutter of the Delanco, the chair of the Delanco Environmental Advisory Board. This one is also the uh, advisory board's um, opinion and stance on the cannabis um, and feels that the um, can it, the Delanco should do an opt out ordinance and a, a an investigation um, of the potential environmental and community impacts of growing production and distribution of legal and medical cannabis, and that um, the EAB would like to be involved in those discussions. So we receive that everyone. Has forwarded that, and we received a, a, a facsimile um, to the mayor asking from the um, from Flossie and Jean Levinson. They had sent the county a letter requesting that the a paved walkway between 47 and 49 Pennington Court in Newton's Landing, and that is one of those connector trails to um, the, the park. So let's see if there's anything else. And everybody did get that. 
And that email did include a picture of the, uh, the pathway as well as a, go a Google over overview. And that's the correspondence that I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. And I think uh, that was the, the item that we discussed in Mr. Fox's uh, report on that uh, um, connecting trail off Pennington. So mm -hmm. we'll get an answer on that fairly quickly, hopefully positive outcome there. All right, uh, discussion items. Uh, Kate, do you want to toss in your, your item here? Yeah, um, this uh, apparently, you know, we're going to be having a memorial for Freddie Weller on June the 6th. Uh, they're dedicating a memorial plaque on the pump station at West Avenue. And apparently, uh, years, the many years that Freddie worked there, there was a joke that that little strip in front of um, the pump station should be called um, Weller Way. And uh, so since he's passed, his wife had mentioned that to Brandy and uh, Brandy brought it up to uh, Tom and I, and we thought it would be a nice um, memorial to Freddie to put that up there. Um, on the side that we own where there's uh, the grassy area. Uh, John, are you still on, John Fenimore? Yes, I am. Um, anyway, so so I was suggesting that maybe that's where it would go, you know, be not right on, you know how, after you make the curve at West Avenue, after you're going yeah, back. Yeah, the road going back to the compost site, the little road. Yeah, that little road. Um, yeah. And uh, I think that would be a nice place for it. Um, but I think it would be nice if we did that well or way. Uh, they teased him about it. And then his wife thought, could we really do that? And I told Brandy I would bring it up before the township committee. I think it's a nice idea. Very good. I thought you would like that, John. So is there any objection to um, doing that? I think when we did um, when we did chance farm away, I don't think we needed a resolution. Did we, Janice, do a resolution? And for Robbins Lane, did we do resolutions on those other two? I think we may have. Yes, yes there you have to, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's an ordinance or a resolution designating uh, that. And if you are you talking about the, the paved part? From the from, you know, the entrance to where the pump station is, or the dirt road part up in up into the compost area um, that leads that, to the compost area. No, actually, it would be uh, the paved part in front of. Um, right. I guess I must understand what John said. It would be the paved part so that you could see it when you turn the bend at West Avenue. You know, when you're going down west and then you turn and you're going up. It would be across the street in that, I think we own that property there that's uh, all grassy field. Why don't, uh, Kate, yeah. uh, you we get with put John just right there. on the little island. Yeah, yeah. And look, look at I'll the area. You, John, I'll meet with you and I'll tell you yeah. where my suggestion is yeah. and, um, okay. and then bring it back to the committee so that they can do uh, yeah. a resolution or ordinance. And um, maybe we can have that sign put in by June 6th. Mm. I'll look up whether it was a resolution or, or an ordinance and um, then get with John to, to mark uh, the area to accompany the resolution or ordinance. Yeah. Okay, and I'll, I'll meet with you, John, maybe sometime tomorrow. Let me know what your okay. schedule is. Yeah, okay. see if uh, uh, you can get uh, Mrs. Weller and uh, Ben um, there at the same time, just so you're all in agreement as to what, what and where it is. Well, Doug works right there, so he should be there. Yeah. Uh, Ben's, Ben's an engineer and he works at ERI, so I don't know if he'll be there, but Doug will be there. All right. All right. Good. All right. Uh, discussion items. Uh, we've taken care of item one, two, and three, unless anyone has any comments to add on those items. Um, the uh, 22 uh, DOT grant program, the local rec improvement. Anyone want to change their vote on priorities? Move something up or down? And uh, Memorial Day Parade, uh, we knocked that out uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, com community solar, we had the presentation at the last meeting. Uh, Mr. Heinhold and Mr. Uh, uh, Coleman sent out a memo a couple of days ago uh, on their opinion on that. And uh, 
um, as far as a disposition of the, the township's part of this. Uh, yeah, that was regarding an email blast. Um, but I thought I, I asked a further question and no one has gotten back to me about it. I did thank them for that. But uh, can an organization uh, distribute the um, PowerPoint? Um, because I think that we need to pick um, the two organizations in town that could receive the money. Uh, there's already six hundred dollars banked um, that can be that can go out to two different organizations, and I had two in mind that I would like to um, nominate if. Um, if I may, because I think that we should designate them. If we can't send an email blast out to residents regarding the uh, sign up, but if an organization wants to share their pow their PowerPoint, I think that should be allowed. Um, be but I haven't received an email from Doug or, or Steve Raymond yet. I did send that to everybody actually, but I have two organizations I would recommend. Well, I, th I think the uh, Mr. Cole, Mr. Raymond, uh, Mr. Raymond, and Mr. Uh, Heinhold's uh, memo kind of covered that. It, it, it didn't cover that it, was, that it was inappropriate for the municipality or uh, organizations of the municipality to. Uh, um, it kind of it it just puts us in a in an awkward position that we it's are. It's not soliciting. I, I, it's not soliciting. If you send, if a member of an organization wants the information any organization in town, the PowerPoint could be supplied to them without us endorsing it, not the township, but maybe a member of the organization. The women's club brought it up at their meeting because a member who signed on asked it to be brought up as a discussion item. Mm -hmm. And so I did basically give them some brief information and said that we would supply them with the PowerPoint for their own information to make that decision. Um, and I think, I don't, I, I don't think that's a problem having someone send out the PowerPoint, not a member of, not the township committee sending it out email blast to our residents, but an organization because we were asked to bring it up. And I also feel that because there's already money setting aside uh, for two nonprofits in town that we should pick them. That email didn't say anything about picking a nonprofit and unless I missed that. No, it, 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 it precluded us doing that because it, it just puts the township uh, in a bad place that we are endorsing a, a business and endorsing uh, a, a, a product that our residents would be entering into a financial agreement on. And if that doesn't quite work out the way it's advertised as, then since we endorsed it and uh, actively advertised it in however mechanism that occurred, that puts, that's, that's, uh, puts us in a bad position. And it's unfortunate that the state and uh, DEP and uh, sustainable uh, Jersey has, um, created this, this odd situation um, that uh, our solicitor uh, and his partner felt is not a place for us to be. Yeah, I know, but it, they, did not, they did not touch base on when us having a nonprofit receive funds for, they didn't, if it, they didn't touch base on that in their email, I'm sorry. So I think that we should pick two organizations. Or I'll wait and talk and, and, and hear an answer. I haven't gotten an answer from Doug or Steve. I emailed them as soon as I got that memo, which I thank them for. And I understand the township not sending out an email blast for that. But what would stop anyone from sending the PowerPoint for someone's information? Well, anyone's so welcome as a private citizen to go search on Google for uh a community solar and so, if this and why, so i'm still asking why can't we pick the two nonprofits? they have, six we have why well, let them pick the two nonprofits in town let the, that company who's making the donation let them pick an organization in town 
whether it's the emergency squad or uh, the library or you know, yeah, I, I, whatever, I, 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 whatever they want to do. It's not us making any type of recommendation. It, they have the money and for them to give the money to whatever organization in town, you know, they have a whole list of organizations. Uh, it's on our websites and they just pick and, you know, whichever one they like. I'll let them know that they can do that on their own. Yes. I'll, yeah. let, them, I'll let them know that. And um, I will let them know that as the township committee, we cannot send an email blast out, but I do believe that private organizations in town members. I don't believe that that has anything to do with promoting uh, it's information that should be available. If we have it, why not share it? I don't, I don't understand that. As an individual, I feel that there are people in town that don't know about it and it's a savings for them. And why wouldn't... The, uh, the, you, you just, you just stated the problem there, Kate. You were saying that it's, there's, there are savings for our residents in town and you're guaranteeing that and when it no, doesn't happen they, when it no you no when and when that doesn't like happen they're going to ask Kate Mr. Patrick why they didn't get their discount or why they didn't get the, the financial benefit explains the process how to sign up it's in the powerpoint so i'm only repeating what's in the powerpoint why why can't i send that powerpoint out so i'll okay. wait to hear from Doug and Steve okay All right Mayor, we did have a comment in the chat sure. um, from Liz Mattisette. Um, could the library make it available to for folks who want to research this option? That was in the chat. And that's what I want to do. I want the Women's Club to be able to send out the PowerPoint to their members to make it available to them. If they want to read it, they read it. If they don't, they don't, they don't open it. It's up to them. Okay. We'll see if uh, if uh, Mr. Heinhold uh, responds to that that particular uh, nuanced question there. Okay, I will call him and ask for a comment. I, I I'd like to know the answer to that. Right. Hey, the yeah. women's club the women's club does not fall under the umbrella of Delanco Township. So they Aren't can they send an it entity out. of their own. Yes, they are an entity of their own. So. For them to request the, that PowerPoint from the solar company and for them to share it, it has nothing to do with us. Okay. Then, I mean, and that's the way I, I would look at it. Okay. I agree. But I was just waiting for Am I missing answer. something, Janice? Well, I'm sitting here biting my lip. Uh, if I recall the uh, presentation uh, the last, when they were at the meeting, Excuse me. I believe they said something about. $200 to organizations for people that signed up from the township's link. Right, you have to sign up on the township's link. So to say that the library or the, <clears throat> excuse me, the women's club is gonna get money if they promote it on their own. No. I think they have to make those arrangements directly with the company. It's, I'm not asking for that, for those organizations to get the money. I'm asking, that the PowerPoint be able to be sent out. Liz is asking if the PowerPoint can be posted on the library's website so people can view it. I'm gonna have the secretary send out the PowerPoint from the women's club. It doesn't say anything about a donation. That PowerPoint does not say anything about a donation going to a specific entity in town. And I, Randy- Ms. Mrs. Ford, Moore makes a good point that the the web link, the sign up link, uh, names Delanco Township. And that was part of the troublesome part of this. I didn't read in that memo, that letter that they said to take that down, take that off. No, th that's the link. As far as the PowerPoint presentation, um, once it was sent to the township and presented to the township, it becomes a public record. Exactly. So if someone, you know, another group wanted to say, hey, here's a PowerPoint presentation, the part with the money comes in about us, the, I believe the, uh, the agreement was that we would sponsor, the township would sponsor the link 
on the website, on our website, and anyone that signed up through our website, that's where the money came in for um, organizations of the committee's choice. So if it's not going through a link from our website, um, you know, any other organization would not be guaranteed um, money for sponsoring it on their website or sending it out to their members. That they'd have to get that clarified with the company. Right. It's it, there. It's a website they've set up separately just for this sign up. And actually, uh, somebody from Riverside signed up on it. So, and they didn't go through our website. They went directly through the PowerPoint presentation, the website mm -hmm. listed there. It's not on our website. No, okay. no. Okay. All right. I know what I have to do. So to be clear, uh, the township of Delanco in no way endorses or advertises for the community solar program as proposed uh, at our last meeting. Is that our understanding, correct? That's my yeah. understanding. Okay. All right, so we're done with that. Any, any further questions on that uh, topic, item four? Uh, recreational cannabis, municipal options and the opt-out uh, ordinance uh, option. Uh, uh, Mr. Heinhold circulated uh, uh, an opt-out uh, uh, ordinance in, uh, in anticipation that uh, we may move in that direction. Uh, does the anyone, uh, the committee have any further comments or views uh, to express on this? And uh, as far as moving, if we want to move forward in this direction, uh, I did, for some reason, I didn't get that. Um, I didn't get that opt out document from Doug. It's in your packet. Oh, it's in this packet. Yeah, that that is the ordinance. I that, saw that. But yeah, I mean, that's I the, get... that is the latest ordinance from Doug. Okay, because I didn't get one by email. So if the committee chooses that this is the route you want to go with an opt out ordinance, the ordinance that's in your packet, notwithstanding any other changes from Doug in between now and May 17th, that would be what will be in your May 17th packet. And May then it will be listed for introduction on the May 17th meeting. May I comment? Go ahead, John. Okay, I missed the last meeting, so I missed the uh, discussion. Uh, I see that uh, it looked like the opt out uh, ordinances heading there. I was never really given my chance to voice my opinion. Uh, I don't know if now is the time or uh, based on the uh, when we vote on the ordinance. I am yeah. concerned that um, in light of what happened uh, January 7th when there were a bunch of radicals who tried to storm our nation's capital because they didn't like the way the presidential vote turned out. I, I just don't want to be disrespectful to the vote that was uh, that took place in New Jersey. It overwhelmingly won and now the uh, it's being put into our hands. I think that's rather unfair that uh, at the upper level it has passed, but the lower level they want us to be the bad guys and say no, no, no. I have been listening to the residents. To me it seems very split. I see some people that are for it and I do see the strong uh, vote against it. Um, you know, I am leaning toward uh, legalization only because it did pass. And, um, you know, I don't know where everybody's pin was. I never found a copy of this meeting uh, on, on any uh, website or anything. It's been up every meeting. Somebody puts it up. I, ha I did not see it. So I think it was uh, forgive me. Steve, Steve McLaughlin usually puts it up. Um, yeah, I didn't see it. The John, John, at that meeting, copy, we, I could send you last week, last uh, month's meeting as well, if you'd like. Okay. Yeah. We just thought it was too soon to do an ordinance uh, to actually establish what we would do, if anything. So we were opting out because, as I understand it, if we decide to opt in, we can do that at any time. But we felt we needed more information to review other areas as well, how it was being handled and if it was causing problems and i think that's why we decided to opt out i thought we had we could opt in at any time but if we don't opt out 
we're automatically in. <coughs> that was my understanding why we were thinking of opting out at this time. We needed more. It, it just worries me, uh, like the affordable housing and the RCAs from years ago, how we were given choices to, uh, you know, RCA ours out or make, make it happen within our own town. And some towns fought it off and said, no, 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 we don't want it, we don't want it. And now they're getting slammed with it. Um, we kept up on ours and I just fear this is almost what the state is doing now. They're, they say, okay, uh, voters vote on it. Yes, all right, now you little municipalities, you guys make it legal. It just really seems uh, wrong to me. If, they've, if they ha have passed a referendum I mean, look, Jesse has to stay ahead of the game with all this, um, you know, enforcement issues. It's going to become legal in the state. Uh, they can't even enforce it on juveniles. I, I think us taking a hard line against it, something doesn't sit right with me. I think we have to work with it, whether we like it or not. John, I'm willing to wait and find out. At this point, uh, John, on, on the, the opt out, uh, as, as Kate has said, and, and the chief has alluded to as he gets information, the landscape out there in a lot in many areas on this is, is really unsettled and undefined. And the, it's, it really clearly looks the safest position for uh, us and many municipalities is to opt out to start and see what the landscape looks like, see what things settle out to be, what this actually looks like uh, uh, in bricks and mortar and an actual uh, practical uh, uh, commercial operation, and then make a, a sound educated judgment on what, uh, what category, uh, which of the five categories or any combination of we do or do not want you know, in our community. Um, as was brought up, uh, I mentioned it, a couple other residents mentioned it, uh, yes, there may have been an overwhelming uh, vote on the ballot question in favor of it uh, when it's something across the street from your house or on the way to your child's school, that becomes, that calculus becomes a little different and uh, people's opinions uh, do change. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of moving parts we don't even know are moving. So uh, at this point, uh, uh, I asked uh, Mr. Heinhold to prepare, prepare an opt-out ordinance because of the, the clock and the timeline. Um, if the committee wants to have further discussion on this and uh, move it to the next meeting, uh, we could do a first reading tonight or not. Um, but it, uh, on this timeline, if we do a first reading tonight, it does give us a, some daylight on the other end. If there's some snafu or something like that, that this ordinance can go through all the uh, uh, processes here at the local level and meet the deadline of, uh, was it August uh, 21st, 25th, to uh, enact something. Uh, if we don't, then we're vulnerable to uh, any and all categories uh, planting their flag here. So um, that's kind of a synopsis of where we are right now. Well, I can appreciate that. I just, I just wanted to take my uh, five minutes of fame and glory and and uh, and uh, while I still have a chance, while I still have a pulpit, uh, you know, I, I for one am annoyed at the television. Every other commercial is gambling, gambling, gambling. And I remember that was illegal. And, uh, you know, now they encourage us, put your credit card up while you're on TV here. So it's only a matter of time where, you know, this will be legal. Um, you know, gambling, they would arrest you and they, you know, the, the speakeasies were arresting and I, I don't know, I'd rather get ahead of this and, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Listen, I don't smoke marijuana. I don't agree with it. I think um, I, I don't like what it does to people, but um, it was passed. So, there were, John, knows, there, were, maybe the world there were issues that were brought up at that meeting. So when you see that uh, video, maybe you'll have a different understanding as well as the smell can be uh, heavy and also the water use. Um, so anyway, when you watch that video, you'll get a lot more information that may be helpful to you to see why we're opting out until we can decide 
if it is really a good thing for Delanco to do one way or fair. another. Fair enough, fair enough. I think a, a big consideration, like I personally thought that I would be more progressive on this issue than it turned out to be. And, and a big factor in that was if, if we don't take the, the safer approach, the wait and see, and someone comes forward with an application and they establish their business, their farm, their you know, manufacturing facility, and five years later, when we do have the opportunity to opt back out, we, they're grandfathered in already. So we can't do anything about the pre-existing right. condition now. All we can do is moderate or mitigate what comes next. So that, that made me a little concerned enough to take the safe route for a change. So, yeah. Pardon, do you have any comments? No, uh, I think looking at at this point is the safest route for our, our community. Uh, and two or three years down the road, once things have uh, flushed out or things have come more to light, then be able to make intelligent decisions based off of fact and not emotion. So, uh, uh, John, I know uh, you missed the, the, the previous meeting when that discussion took place. Uh, uh, are you okay or uncomfortable if we do proceed with this or with the first reading or would you rather? Uh, I, I do thank everybody who just sent me a copy of the uh, video of the meeting. I would like to see that, but, you know, Mayor Mike, if you, f you feel you got, I mean, it's four against one, so you can move forward. Uh, I. I think we should, uh, if it were to me, I would take my time. I, I don't think, um, well, I would have to abstain on the vote tonight only because I didn't get a chance to see the uh, all the commentary. Uh, how's the rest of the committee? Do you, uh, you wanna start, start this moving or defer? I mean, we could always get to, you know, do first reading and what continue the, the public hearing uh, to the, to a later meeting, correct? Well, hey, you know, you have to you have to send to the Joint Land Use Board right. for their June meeting. So whether you introduce it at this meeting or the seventeenth, it doesn't matter. If people haven't <laughs> read it in their packet; they don't even know what they're introducing. Yeah. And John, think... not only the video, but you should look at what we post on the website. I don't know if you read all those documents that we had talked about a little bit at the meeting, but. Introducing it whether tonight or the 17th will have the same end time frame. You won't be having public hearing until your June meeting anyhow. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's do it uh, the open and public and democratic way, and we'll uh, we'll talk about this and uh, talk about introducing at the set meeting on the 17th. Is that agreeable? Yes. Okay. So we'll have first reading um, on May 17th. It'll be in yeah. your packets and it's scheduled on the agenda for first reading by title only and then um, set a public hearing date for J the June 12th meeting and then in between it goes to the planning board for its consistency review. Right. And Mr. Heinhold will be at the uh, at the meeting on the 17th. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes he will. Yep. Yes, thank you. All right. Thanks for uh, the good points, John. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, we do not need any, uh, nothing for executive unless uh, nothing is popped not up for us. in the last two hours or so. Any uh, last comments or uh, items from the uh, committee? Hey, I have some questions and concerns regarding the camp meeting. I actually had been sending information to Richard and Janice and to the code enforcement official regarding the chipping paint, the rust on the, on the pillars, the parking lot uh, condition with the potholes, the parking lot um, painting, repainting the parking areas. And I think all these issues um, are violations of our ordinances. And if they aren't, then they should be. And I wanna know what, has he been served with any documentation, Richard? Because I see no improvements nothing's happening. So, I mean, I've yeah. been doing this for months now. Yeah, I don't, uh, I asked uh, the code enforcement officer to put something together and then we'd run it by Doug just to make sure. So I will reiterate that uh, we expect him to do that based on what he already has. 
And if he needs more ordinances, he's supposed to ask for it. Okay, because I know, I mean, this has been going on for months since the winter when I, when the potholes were so bad and, uh, and they still are bad. So, okay, so something will be moving forward then because he's, he's in violation of several ordinances. If we can cite a property owner for chipping paint on somebody's home in town, we certainly should be able to uh, serve him with an order for the chipping paint on the building and on the pillars that are also rusting. Um, I, I don't get what the holdup is. So I, I would like to see that move forward. It's been, uh, camp meeting has been a problem. It's been a problem since even the white cell when they had it. Uh, it was the, uh, um, well, the tail end of their priorities. I remember talking to the uh, right cell, uh, white cell uh, commercial development uh, uh, manager at one of the planning board hearings, perhaps 10, 12 years ago, and how uh, poor condition and, and just the shabby condition of, of the whole thing. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, the tenants in there, the, the, the storefronts, uh, uh, they're hardworking and, and uh, all of them, uh, you know, Vinny's, Christina's, 7-Eleven, uh, uh, Mr. Shaw at uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Mr. Shaw was incredibly, uh, uh, when that uh, project was, was going through the planning board process initially, uh, Dunkin' Donuts Corporate wanted to uh, put up, I think it was about a 12 or 15 foot illuminated sign along Burlington Avenue. And uh, uh, I talked to the people at corporate there at the, the planning board meeting and kind of got the, the Stonewall uh, response. But I called Mr. Shaw and uh, uh, he, uh, uh, I think he, it, it cost him some money, but because uh, it's a package of signage that the Duncan corporate uh, sells to the franchisees. But uh, he ended up uh, buying the smaller sign that uh, is out there right now. So, um, uh, He's one of the, like many of our small businesses, an exemplar example of uh, uh, our, our small town businesses that uh, should be patronized and encouraged. So um, anyway. I um, have to add when Whitesell owned that building, um, I had contacted Whitesell on some issues and they actually did put up some green fencing uh, to block the view from the people on Chestnut Street where, where the um, dumpsters. dumpsters were. And they also um, did some power washing and cleaning up uh, the sidewalk issues. And I talked with Whitesell about that and they did that. Uh, and sometimes just reaching out helps. Reaching out to this landlord hasn't helped at all. Uh, I did reach out to the one landlord before he sold it to the current landlord. And, and uh, uh, he knew what the problem was. And I had pictures and, and he did a little bit of work, but not much. And I mean, the only thing he did was cut the grass yep. with a little tiny lawnmower. So at right. least they had somebody else doing the grass, but I would really like to see that move forward. Anything else from the committee? Last yeah. comments, Mr. Schwab, Mrs. Lohr, Chief. We have one additional, one additional item in the chat, uh, again, from Liz Mattisette, she would just like the clarification on the video that Kate was talking about and if there is a link for that. What video? I don't have a video. I have a PowerPoint um, that if uh, that the women's club will be sending out to their members. I don't know anything about a video. Okay. So that was on the solar issue. I, yeah, I'm, I'm only reading what she posted. So, right. Yeah. Oh, something like, about she's saying neighborhood how to solar. Neighborhood sun dot solar. Right. But she she this just, has to do with the cannabis. Cannabis. Yeah. Can you see her comments? Oh. Her chat? Oh, yeah. the video would be our township meeting. Yeah. The one that yeah. was sent to me. And yeah. The, the last yeah. meeting. Yeah. Magic right. posted the link to the, the April 19th meeting. All right. Yeah. So that'll be, that'll be up and available. All right. Yep. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Moved. A second. All in favor? Aye. Good night, everybody. Thank Good night. you. Night. John. John. I'll, oh, John, I'll call you. Okay, Kate. Okay.
Good night, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Aaron. Thanks. Well, congratulations. Good night, boy. See you guys tomorrow. Good night, Mary Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> That's my line. <clears throat> Thank you, Aaron. You're welcome. Good night. Good night.